Dr. Sears, tell us a bit about the theory behind intermittent fasting and what exactly it is. Well, the theory is if I basically eat within a certain time frame, I will basically lose weight. I don't have to change my diet. I just basically compress the time area. Now, the question doesn't make sense. Potentially, potentially. It says, yes, anytime you basically spend less time eating, you do have the possibility of restricting the number of calories you eat. That's what's going to be the primary cause of weight loss. But does it work? Mm -hmm. The data is pretty mixed at best. Uh, because again, it comes back to calorie restriction. The only way you're going to lose fat, you can lose weight a lot of ways, but losing fat, you have to restrict calories. So what happens? People say, I'll eat two meals per day yep. as opposed to three. So what they tend to do is eat more at the two meals or as equal amount as a three. So they're not reducing calories. Mm -hmm. So uh, intermittent fasting does have some benefits in terms of controlling the amount of time you're eating as long as you're restricting calories. Now, one of the things you've talked about, so I know you align there on the calorie restriction part, but another thing you've talked about is there is something to be said about kind of with circadian rhythms and the timing piece. So can you talk a bit about that? And and that that circadian rhythms is basically how basically our our cells, all 30 trillion of them, are orchestrated by sunlight. And basically uh, our body is uh, developed as, as the sun goes down or goes up, we begin to basically change our metabolism in each of our cells. Now, circadian rhythms of Again, we uh, oftentimes disrupt them by having too much uh, light after the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. Things like watching screens on a TV, watching computers, uh, playing video games. So this basically causes confusion, confusion in the brain in terms of saying, are we basically in light or are we in dark? And as a consequence, your metabolism gets disrupted in the process. So in your opinion, to kind of go based on circadian rhythm, what's kind of the ideal time frame for your eating window? Well, this is a no-brainer. The, the ideal time is to eat as soon as you wake up. And the last meal before the sun sets. Mm -hmm. That's it. Now, uh, in Boston, in the summer, that's great. I can right. eat most of the day. <laughs> uh, in the winter, Not so I've got much. a very, very small window. <laughs> it's like 4 p.m. dinners. <laughs> but, but again, it's the circadian rhythms that basically control our metabolism. Mm -hmm. And basically to ignore that is to say that um, you're going to basically cause disruptions in metabolism, which is going to give rise to weight gain and earlier development of chronic disease. Now, that being said, what really basically is the, the intermediary between basically sunlight, uh, circadian rhythms, and what's happening at the cellular level? Not surprisingly, the answer is AMPK. This is the master regulator of metabolism, and it also is a master regulator of circadian rhythms. So what happens if your AMPK levels are low? You've lost control. Mm -hmm. So this, is, so again, there's a benefits in terms of intermittent fasting. As I pointed out, eat your first meal as soon as you wake up eat your last meal before the sun goes down. And now basically you're making your meals, if they're balanced, in alignment with your circadian rhythms. Now, one thing I just want to highlight here, because we do get this question a lot, is could you quickly talk about why it's so important to eat within that hour uh, of waking? Because I know sometimes that people who do intermittent fasting will tell us, oh, I eat at 10 a.m., you know, I'll get up at 5 or I'll get up at 6. But can you just highlight really why that first hour is so important? Well, as a, a, a dietitian, the word breakfast means break the fast. Mm -hmm. Now you've been sleeping uh, and really everything's on empty. Right. So this is what, this is the best time to refuel the body. Now most people would say, well, I'll have a cup of coffee. Bad choice. This is the time you want to basically get the protein, carbide, and fat into the body to basically reestablish the appropriate balance of the hormones. So basically you'll get the greatest cluck for the buck. So again, of uh, Eating early in the morning makes perfect sense. But say, I don't have time. That's a bad excuse. Mm -hmm. and say, say you, this is the most important thing you can do. It Do it right. But that's also the hardest meal to get protein at. Right. What's most people's idea of a breakfast, a cup of coffee, and a donut. Again, not the best choices for a hormonal output for the next five hours 
Right. And the one thing I want to talk about too here is that, so where, where you align with the zone and intermittent fasting is the calorie restriction, but you can't just restrict calories because you're going to lose the wrong type of weight. So can we talk a little bit about why you really need that macronutrient balance like you talked about, especially if you're restricting calories? Well, again, it comes back to being in the zone. And the zone means balance. Mm -hmm. So what you need to have, and these were studies actually done at Harvard Medical School back in 1999, uh, is that the balance of protein, carbohydrate, and fat is incredibly important for balancing the hormones in the blood, primarily glucagon that maintains blood sugar levels, and insulin, so you have enough insulin to drive them into the cells. So it's just not restricting calories, it's restricting calories and maintaining an appropriate balance of protein to carbohydrate the best you can at every meal. Then we come to the area of calorie restriction. <clears throat> it's saying, but what if I'm always hungry? That's why you need to have adequate protein at every meal. And what's adequate protein? About 30 grams of protein. Now that's easy at dinner. You might be able to do it at lunch, almost impossible at breakfast. So again, once you begin to basically now say, I'll get a balance of protein, carbohydrate, and fat, try to basically consume all my meals evenly spaced in the time period when the sun is up and consume my last meal before the sun goes down, then I'll get better results. And that's why basically there is some benefits to intermittent fasting, as long as you're following calorie restriction and balancing the diet. And the other thing too, um, just to highlight is that as you're restricting calories, you know, getting enough protein at each meal also helps to make sure that the weight you are losing, you're still retaining your muscle mass, which is really important too. Well, this is, again, people say, well, I want to lose weight. Wrong answer. You want to lose fat. Right. And actually the right answer, I want to lose fat and maintain your lean body mass. Again, what is lean body mass? Yes, it's your muscle. It's also your liver, your kidney your heart, your brain. These are things you don't want to lose. So again, that's why you need to have adequate protein, not only to make, stop hunger, but also to maintain lean body mass. Well, Dr. Sears, you did a wonderful job of telling us about the benefits of intermittent fasting, but also why it's really important to really go with the zone in terms of the macronutrient balance between the meals, plus the calorie restriction, because you can lose excess body fat while retaining muscle mass. Um, but obviously, the, comp it's, the science here is complex. So if people do want to learn more about intermittent fasting, the zone and metabolic engineering, where should they go? I would awfully recommend them go to drsears.com. As you said, metabolism is complex. And what we try to do is break it down into simple formats to say, here's the science and here's the practicality of how you can do it. Now, what's the benefit? Well, yes, you will lose uh, fat. More importantly, you maintain wellness. But here's the big benefit. You'll live longer and live better. For more on this subject and many other topics on the science of wellness, go to drsears.com.